So, I hope you uh, could gather from uh, the previous uh, song I played and the few chords I just demonstrated that this is really a fantastic sounding guitar. It's, uh, it also looks fantastic, I think, and uh, it really plays very nicely as well. It's uh, an ARIA Pro 2 PE 175 Herb LS Signature model. PE stands for uh, Professional Electric. I never gathered what the Pro 2 stands for. Uh, they don't have a Pro 1 series, for instance, as far as I know, but never mind that. The yeah, Herb Alice, it says here, H-E, it says Herb Alice. Herb Alice was a fairly famous uh, jazz guitarist from between the 50s and 80s mostly, I think. Um, he died some, some 12 years ago in, in, in his 80s. Um, he played with the Oscar Peterson trio. I don't know that much music of his, but uh, yeah, we can rest assured that he was a very proficient guitarist if you get to play with what many judge to be the best jazz piano player of all time, Oscar Peterson. Um, the few things that I have heard of Herb Alice uh, really sound nice to me because he had a very defined, clear tone, uh, not a warm but clear. And um, that was not, not always the case with the jazz guitars in, in that time. It could be sometimes a bit muffled and too, yeah, too with too little treble in the tone for my taste. So, yeah, so much uh, uh, about Herb Alice. Uh, that's where this guitar comes from. It actually also has a warm and clear tone, so it, uh, yeah, that might not be a coincidence, it being his signature model. You can see him actually play uh, in, in a few videos on, uh, on YouTube with uh, using this guitar. Um, yeah, Aria uh, always has been a, a typical mid-price uh, level guitar. And so it was at that time, most Japanese brands were. I bought this guitar in 1988. It's a guitar from 1984, which means that it's from the famous Matsumoku era of Aria, when, uh, the factory where these guitars were being made. Several other brands came from those uh, factories as well. And they're known for uh, f uh, exceptionally high quality uh, for, for the amount of money they had to cost. Because as I said, it was just mostly mid-range guitars Price guitars uh, around 500, perhaps 600 dollars, uh, but that would be it. Um, I bought this one in 1988 when I was four years old. I paid 1,400 guilders for it, what, which would translate, which would translate to some 600 uh, dollars now. But that was used, knew it was 1,900. I was told at least, which would be some 900 dollars, which is on the high side. Well, perhaps the, the top range of what you still could call uh, mid-price guitars. Depends a bit on your definition, of course. But yeah, it really was a flagship model from uh, their jazz guitar range back then. Uh, there was a uh, PE-165 as well. I've also seen PE-180s in, in folders. But this was definitely uh, one of the top of the range guitars. And really is of excellent quality. Uh, having said that, um, it was only four years old, but it was already in a pretty worn state. Uh, the, the gold plating has worn off of these pickups also here from the bridge. Uh, it has faded here in the tailpiece. Two of these top covers where it says tone had come off. I painted that gold myself so at least from a distance this, this pattern would be nicely restored. Uh, the tuning heads were not all that great. One was even uh, replaced for, uh, for a clues on the, the brand that you find in Gibson's. I found them slipping a bit, at least that's what I thought, so um, when I replaced the tuning hands on my Ibanez, I put the ones of the Ibanez on here. They weren't perfect either, because that's why I replaced them, but they were better than the original ones, uh, I thought. Perhaps I should treat this one day to, to uh, some new machine hands. On the other hand, that would be kind of out of, yeah, <laughs> out of sync with this uh, worn uh, image, so uh, who knows. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that guitar got, got in such a state after only uh, four years. Um, perhaps that, perhaps it has been played very intensively. Perhaps that person had very aggressive sweat. I've, I've known people who have to change their strings every two weeks because they're completely dead after two weeks as a result of that. So, or perhaps a combination of those things. Uh, and perhaps I did pay a bit much for it. It was only four years old, but in that state. But yeah, then again, I never was a good uh, negotiator, so uh, there you are. And I'm, I've always been very happy with this guitar anyway. Um, I, bought, I bought it actually, uh, this is my only my second uh, electric guitar after the Ibanez. I bought it because I was going to, uh, I was planning on going to music college then, and 
I didn't want to study didn't want to study classical music, but I want to study modern music, which in those days was mostly jazz oriented. So I really uh, felt I needed a jazz guitar. I never made it into that college, by the way, but yeah. I always kept the guitar because although I'm not a real jazz guitarist, I can fake it a bit as you just heard, but I'm not a real jazz guitarist. But I do like the sound of jazz guitars very much, it's uh, especially of, of, of this one. Um, what is a guitar made of? Well, the body is all maple, which might explain why it's a slightly heavy guitar um, for a hollow body, a bit heavier than you'd expect. Maple is not a light wood, so perhaps that's it. Um, the neck is mahogany and the fingerboard is of out of ebony. There's varieties where the fingerboard is rosewood and, and the neck is maple as well. I saw on some brochures. Um, the neck as such is very thin and, and also fairly narrow uh, for a jazz guitar. Um, that, that's, uh, that's where it's actually much different uh, from what its name is inspired on, inspired on uh, namely the Gibson ES-175. Uh, obviously the PE-175 refers after that. 175, originally those numbers of Gibson guitars referred to the amount of dollars they, uh, they cost. So uh, yeah, at one point there must have been an ES-175 that cost $175. Nowadays those things cost $4,000 or something like that. They're, they're really, really expensive guitars. Um, it's a bit of a strange name because the ES-175 has a Florentine pointy cutaway, while this has a rounded Venetian cutaway. Also, this shape here on the tailpiece is the one you find on an L5, on the Gibson L5, not a 175. The L5s, however, were bigger guitars. They resembled the original acoustic guitars that could also be amplified, which is what Gibson started actually in the 1940s. Perhaps an L5 even is an acoustic guitar as well. I'm, I'm not completely sure about that. Charlie Christian started on the L4, which really was an acoustic guitar with a pickup. So uh, it is that series, that L series, that, 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 that are directly deri derived from acoustic guitars. Um, but yeah, the overall size is, it resembles more that of an ES-175, uh, so perhaps that's why it has this name. Also, older versions of this guitar did have the pointy uh, Florentine shape and still had a Gibson-like headstock as well. Yeah, so I've, I've been playing it on the neck, on the bridge, no, the neck pickup mostly. That's, that's the sound I mostly like. That isn't to say that its other sounds are completely unusable. Or, uh, uh, unusable. I used to play in a big band with this guitar and uh, they had their part of uh, pop or uh, slight rock, light rock or a bit funky song as well. And then I could use um, the, the middle setting of this uh, guitar as well, which actually has a, has a nice funky sound, which is uh, fairly usable, you can, uh, as, you, uh, as I'll show you. Nice, light, transparent sound, works perfectly well. Also because of the, the hollow body, it's got not that much uh, sustain, it's got a bit more pointier sound than a, than a solid body, so actually it works quite well like that. In, although I don't, wouldn't select this guitar for it, but in case of emergency you can even get a bit of a rock sound out of it, which, yeah, if, uh, if, uh, I, I wouldn't play a rock concert on it, but if necessary you can do it as well. It's possible, as you could, perhaps could notice, it's not um, for push-up pull-ups. Uh, this neck doesn't play completely comfortable for that. It's really got low frets, uh, really kind of Gibson-style neck. Although the thing that's very different from the ES-175 is that it's got a very slim and also fairly narrow neck, which is kind of atypical for a jazz guitar. Well, Sound-wise, okay, if I only had to play one, perhaps only the one rock solo in, out of a repertoire of 30 songs with that big band, for instance, I'm not going to take a whole extra guitar for just those uh, two or three bars of solo. I would do another guitar. But as you can hear, it uh, uh, causes a bit trouble. It's not your first pick for that. So, here we are. Uh, beautiful jazz guitar which actually can do a few other things as well if you really uh, need it as you just could hear. Um, if you'd like to go hunting for one of these um, 
they don't have to be, they still are not all that expensive. You should be able to find one for somewhere between $700 and $900. The strange thing being that it actually is fairly hard to actually find one. They, they are not uh, very much on offer, but for some reason the price doesn't go up all that much either. If you look uh, at other flagship model uh, Japanese guitars, like my Ibanez Musician, for instance, yeah, that will go for over $1,000. Uh, or if you look at a similar, kind of similar guitar, the, the uh, Ibanez uh, George Benson jazz guitars, and they go for over $1,500 or even $2,000. Uh, They're really in demand and you, you pay top dollars for that. Um, so yeah, if you can find one, uh, you, you'd be very lucky. You'd have a fantastic guitar for not all that much money. It goes for several Aria guitars of that era, actually. So uh, yeah, good luck to you if you uh, if you're going to search for one. I'm not going to sell it because this guitar, like many of my guitars, actually has a, a lot of emotional value to me. It was my second electric guitar. It was the one I tried to go to music college with. Uh, really, in that time, I tried to change my career, but not didn't quite succeed. Well, I changed my career, but not, <laughs> not in the way I had hoped. But yeah, anyway, so I'm not selling this one, a bit of tough luck there. But uh, again, good luck uh, with your search if you're trying to find one. And thank you for watching again. And until next time. And uh, thank you for watching this video again. Until next time. A little Mike Pence moment there. There was a fly on my head. Now I have to do it again. Or also my Ibanez musician. They have much more of a reputation. So reputation. Reputation. So.